can't jump too tight. Who cares? Get in the car. Who cares? Why are you pushing me off the floor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you are? Worry about what I'm doing. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. No home. No home. On June 12, 2022, in Key Largo, Florida, a Monroe County deputy noticed a car going too fast. The 26-year-old driver, Donovan Roos, didn't stop and instead sped away, leading the deputy on a chase. I was going to have your hands. Hands up in the air! Hands up in the air right now. Turn around, turn around. Turn around, do not face me. Turn around. Turn around. Just walk, walk right here. Walk right here. Shut the f*** up. Get right over here. I don't give a who you are? Get on your goddamn knees. Hey, I'm a cop. Why are you, why are you acting like that? I'm a cop. Then you'll listen to me when I tell you to get on your f***ing knees. Uh, man, I'm a cop. After being stopped, Roos claimed he was a cop on duty, but the deputy noticed he seemed drunk and managed to stop him. It's disappointing to see police officers, who know the laws well, breaking them. Miami-Dade. Why are you acting like that, man? Stand there. Ten, eleven, twenty customers. Imagine. Be quiet. Don't say another word. You hear me? Radios and all kinds of shit. What's up, man? What's going on? Man? I haven't seen you in a bit. Yeah, every once in a while, I get stuck on that. Ten, eleven. Release the air. Why are all these radios open? Holy. Jesus. What? Sarge, I can't see you. Well, that wasn't on when he passed me. No, he's drunk. In the car, deputies discovered two weapons, a Miami-Dade police ID and badge, a body camera, a tactical vest, and more police gear, showing Roos was indeed a real officer. They then decided to get in touch with Roos's boss and read him his rights. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. Do you understand each other these rights I've explained to you? I get it, brother. With these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now? No, sir. Okay. I feel you're impaired. Me? Yeah. No. Okay. Are you willing to perform field sobriety exercise to dispel my suspicion that you're impaired to drive? No, sir. No. Okay. Roos exercised his Miranda rights and chose not to take part in field sobriety tests or give breath samples. The store, because I don't want to be responsible for in cars, firearms. Yep. Uh, yeah, if we can ask, if we can do them solid and let them know that they got all this shit here, if they have somebody local that can come and pick it up, so that, I mean, I don't mind doing the property receipt. That's not the reason. I'm just saying, it's got. I, I don't even know what's in here. Okay. Well, we don't want to leave all your shit here, man. We don't want to put it into property. We want to see if we can get it to a supervisor. Okay. Preferably your supervisor to keep it under wraps. So, do you happen to have his name, the phone number? You already invoked your right to remain silent, so I'm not going to ask you any questions, bro. Oh, man. Bro, you you. This is not the highlight of my day. I know, uh, bro. I'm sorry, brother, but... Yep, don't say anything else. The officer did the right thing by treating Roos properly. It's too often that police look out for one another, which is wrong. Roos faced charges for fleeing from an officer, a felony, and for driving drunk, a misdemeanor. He was suspended from his job without pay. George Perez, the interim director of Miami-Dade Police, made a statement after Roos was arrested saying, the MDPD won't stand for this kind of behavior because it doesn't match our commitment to the community and its trust. As usual, we'll help with the court process. During this, the officer will be off duty and, due to the felony charge, won't get paid as per our policy. A group of young individuals were relaxing in a car when Eustis Police Department officers in Florida approached them over something minor, like flicking ash out of the window. Why do I need to show you my? So, hey, hey, I don't even smoke. Huh? Okay. I don't even smoke. No, 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 we're just asking. That's all. Brad, how are you opening the door, sir? You not see this? Yeah, yeah hey, opening the door, sir. Hey, sir, sir, sir. Why are you putting hey, your hands on me? Do you see this, right? Hey, just hold on. You got his own camera, right? Listen, bro. Then, 
one of the officers aggressively handled a passenger who wasn't equipped with any recording devices, probably trying to make sure there was no evidence of what he did. Step out. Step out. Sir, please record yourself. Are you serious? Watch them. Watch them. Are you serious right now? Hey, boss, stay in the car. Hey, stay in the car. Stay in the car. You didn't have to come here, guys. Just stay still. We're good. The officers not only behaved inappropriately, but also neglected to identify themselves, breaking basic protocol. This raises the question of whether they would have acted the same way if an older individual had been in the car instead of young people who appeared to be without power. It seems unlikely that they would have. Uh, several times. There you go. Alright, you ready? Step up. Step up. Okay, you want to pull your pants up for you real quick? Yeah. We'll go over to my car, okay? If it sounds ridiculous, you just gotta listen to us. It doesn't sound ridiculous. He still didn't have rights to pull me That's out of the car like that and slam me on the ground, bro. Period. You know you're. You know you're. You know you are, bro. That was not legal. Hey, bro, that was not legal. Hey, no, it was not. Help. This isn't gonna help, bro. Just talk to me. The officer blatantly acknowledged that, although the situation might seem absurd, it was his partner's method of operation. This admission not only reflects poorly on their reputation, but also reveals that there's a pair of them who have been intimidating citizens in this manner from the start. Can you give me your name now? Man, I need okay. to talk to somebody. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Doe. talking to you. I need to talk to I'll somebody else. John Doe I need to talk to somebody else, identify. man. Listen, bro, that was not right. That was I not right. That's times. not right. Listen, for asking a cigarette, are you gonna listen bro, to what I have you to say? You could easily gave us a warning. Let's go on. No, I was going to give you warning, but you wrong. have to identify yourself. You did nothing wrong. You want me to identify myself for asking right, out a window? For asking out a window, dude? Judge, man, Come on, man. Y'all need to call somebody, bro. You're going to book me on asking a cigarette, bro, and that makes your day better. This guy was spot on. Respect should go both ways. You can't treat someone harshly and then expect them to be cooperative. It's about give and take. According to the officer, he was detaining the individual for resisting arrest, which is considered a secondary charge. This implies that there must be an initial reason for the arrest for the charge of resisting to be valid. I did not resist. I asked him, what did I do wrong, sir? What's your name, man? All I asked him, my name is Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Listen, sir, he has it all on video. All I asked him was, what I did wrong, I want, I've never heard asking out of a window is a misdemeanor. And then now he's telling me I'm going for resisting arrest. I, all I wanted to say was I wanted to talk to him, sir, and my whole my whole 24 is a year, living, sir, I've not heard that. I did not try to resist this man. I did not snatch from him. While detaining one individual, this officer wasn't going to go easy on the others either. It turns out he wasn't just any cop. He was part of a K-9 unit. He had everyone exit the car and then claim that his dog had detected an illegal substance on a dollar bill inside. Fine. Yeah. Fine. That was fast. More dope. Okay. Yeah. What happened? Call them. Here's pain detained for him. Why are you detained? Pain detained. Turn around, face the car real quick. I don't know, man. Just for now. If they're fed, then you'll be good. Why are we being detained? That's right. You can meet on the car real quick. Like, why are we being detained? We found drugs. What so drugs? we figure out whose it is and everything. Hey, um, if it's not y'all, it's y'all be good, and y'all be on your way. What drugs did you find? Like, I wasn't there. I've been here with you the whole time. Bro, like, why, like, bro, there's nothing in that car. There's nothing in the car. These officers seem eager to bring innocent people into difficult situations, but become evasive when asked to provide evidence for their suspicions. The officer managed to find residue of an illegal substance on the dollar bill without his body cam capturing the search. This oversight makes him appear either unskilled or dubious at best. I smoke in the car, I got my medical How does it alert to the odor of Yeah, the yeah, odor of marijuana, nigga. I fucking got my medical car, bro. I got my medical car. You're fucking shut up. You didn't get no That's why you're not shit. They both need to be searched. Why are you shut up? Why are you shutting me up? Why are you shutting me up? Hey, I told you to be quiet, dude. You're not making this easier. Now you're going to sit in the back seat. Please go for me, boss. Exactly. Anything on me is my ID. Despite the man's assertion that he had a medical card for the substance, the officer continued to be aggressively intimidating and rude, ignoring the man's explanation and instead issuing orders. Based on, based on his face tattoos and everything, that was an instinct. Well, I'll tell you, he we, say, we got a call. Did, but... We got a call about y'all. That's why we checked out in the first place, and then we saw. I'm sorry, but it's been, they yeah, got a call about it's been yeah, that I've been able to deal with officer the officer recently, bro. Because we were sitting in the park. Someone said they saw a narcotic deal. A narcotic deal. That's just what we were, we were called in. 
What? Yeah, that was the reason for The officer confessed that they probably pulled the car over because some Karen suspected them of dealing illegal substances. At the end of the day, whether he stopped us for resistance arrest, I mean, for uh, uh, asking a cigarette, you can't even resist resistance arrest. I never told him. I never, I never resist. He never told me I was under arrest. He literally, we were not even detained. How am I resisting arrest when we're not detained? He never his rights never at all. Me my bag because every time you try, it sticks to your fingers and it doesn't actually go off the bag. Uh, but I don't know if the camera's going to be able to pick it up, but right here next to the president's head, there's the spot where I wipe the bill, and there's now a clean spot. So there's a complete layer of cocaine all the way across the dollar bill, hence why uh, the owner is going to be charged with possession of cocaine. The testimony doesn't hold up as proof because there's no video evidence showing him discovering the dollar bill in that condition. This situation only further highlights how unreasonable the cop is and how oblivious the rest of the squad seems to be to his overbearing behavior. Or should I tow it? Can I just talk for it? No, do you want one of them to drive your car or should I tow it? Do you want one of them to drive your car or should I tow it? Listen, please. The last time I'm gonna ask. Please, please. 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 stop, bro. Come on. Can you listen? I'm like, I'm here to talk. I'm trying to talk to you. Okay, and I Can understand. You just listen to me. However, I wasn't here for the uh, entirety no, of the that's not, investigation. There's no coke in there. There's not, I don't do drugs. The unfortunate aspect is that, even though these individuals were later proven innocent, the accusation still ends up on their criminal record, and a substantial amount of money is lost in legal fees to contest it. This situation could hinder their chances of finding employment at reputable organizations and understandably results in a significant loss of trust in law enforcement. I found probable cause for an arrest for you. Wow. So I, what it is that he found, I don't know. He made a comment about cocaine. That's it's not. Assume that. There's nothing. Okay, so I got a question. Uh, why? Yeah. Everybody else had a body cam, but one person that searched the car didn't have a body cam. Wait, what? He doesn't have a body cam. Well, wait, everyone, everyone stop. Okay, can I get I have a lot of work to do. But look, I'm going to look, look into like, it. Like, can't y'all, like, just peep? Like, this is bull, bro. This I'm going to look into it. It's Everybody calm though. down. Okay? All right, listen, your boys are gonna, your boys are gonna get you out. You're saying that doesn't matter, sir. Like, I was supposed to see my fucking kids this weekend, bro. You're supposed to okay. pick them up today. All right, watch out, I'm gonna close the door. Man, man, man. Hey, I love you. The entire situation suggests that the police department is inclined towards treating these individuals unfairly, highlighting a major contradiction in the concept of free speech. It's a stark reminder that the freedom to express oneself without fear of unjust treatment is compromised when incidents like these continue to occur. The Ashlands Police Department was called to a house party in Toledo, Ohio. The guests there weren't making trouble and there wasn't any sign of violence or unruly behavior. So, when the police decided to start arresting them, seemingly without any clear reason, it caused a lot of concern. Hey, who lives here? Who's the owner I can talk to? Who lives here? This ain't got nothing to do with us. I'm asking who lives here. You do? Yeah. All right, arrest him, 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 and them too. Hey, hey oh, you can't go in my house. Watch out. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I ain't even doing that to you. Why you pushing me off the court? Get out of the don't stay back. Don't stay back. Failure disperse. Failure disperse, everybody. The officer informed them that they were being charged with failure to disperse, a charge in Ohio that requires the suspect's presence to significantly risk causing physical harm or substantial inconvenience to the public. In this case, it's apparent the officer was simply searching for a pretext to target the guests. All right, let's just do this in the back of cars. Why? Okay, I'll explain to you. I stood here and I told everybody to go in the house. You didn't tell Listen, me. You didn't are you going to let me explain or are you going to no, talk sir. over me? Not I stood here. And I told everybody in here either go in the house or, or leave. After I said that, nobody moved. I said you're going to jail if you don't move. Nobody moved. The reason nobody dispersed, which might be hard for the officer to understand, is because he never actually instructed anyone to go inside. He just inquired about who lived there and then began arresting individuals. It's worth noting that if the initial call was due to a public disturbance, the situation has only become noisier since the police showed up, almost as if they were the cause of it. And if you believe the officers are about to back down, think again. This officer intensifies the situation further by drawing his weapon to intimidate the residents. Guys, let's go! Time to move, let's go! Who else wants to go to jail? Does they're about to go? Go! Go! Why don't you listen and just go home? I don't have patience.
People go to jail when I'm around. You know, before there was buy cameras, I wonder how many sergeants would just light this thing up, like oh, yeah. empty this tank. The cop's sarcastic comments are genuinely alarming, as he essentially suggests he'd shoot everyone present if given the chance. This shows he's intoxicated with power, and he's not alone in this behavior. Ashlyn Pluff is also at the scene, acting in a similar manner, but her actions escalate to an even more violent conclusion. You're not walking back up to that house! Turn back around! I don't care! No! No! Go! I can take your ass to jail! I don't give a Failure to disperse! Get the out! Now! Go! The situation is obviously very tense. Adding to the intensity is the fact that the woman involved in the upcoming incident is professional boxer O'Shea Jones, an athlete of Olympic caliber who deserves recognition and admiration for her skills. Yet, she faced a straightforward assault. Back up! Go! I'm asking Go! Back now! Number. I'm asking for his I back! I don't care! Back up! I'm asking for his back! Give me your phone! Give me your phone! Nope! I'm not even here! You can't do that to her phone! Back the f*** up! What is wrong with y'all? You can't do that to her phone! Back up! Okay, give me her give phone! Me. Okay, no. that's her phone, so yes. you gotta keep it. Right, I'm give my phone. Phone. No, you're not giving your phone to anyone. I'm breaking my wrist. I'm then my stop phone. moving! Hey, hey, Calm hey. down. You angry. Stop she's twisting. angry. All I'm saying, she's squeezing quit my hands twisting, for no reason. Will you quit f***ing moving? Stop f***ing cussing me. I got it. I got it. Right here, right here. The assault on O'Shea Jones is indefensible. She was surrounded and restrained by officers when Ashlyn struck her, driven by nothing but anger and hostility. However, Ashlyn seemed to overlook the fact that every officer on the scene was outfitted with a body camera, capturing her actions clearly. In a disappointing turn, prosecutors deemed this use of force justified arguing that O'Shea was resisting arrest and the punch was merely a technique to ensure compliance. O'Shea faced a verbal reprimand for using profanity during the incident, but did not face any criminal charges. On August 20, 2020, Marin Humphrey Jr., a student who was lost from Effville, was driving a U-Haul back to his hometown of Little Rock with his belongings. While Humphrey was driving, Trooper Stephen Payton sped up to 100 miles per hour to catch up to him. Nervously, Humphrey missed the exit, leading Trooper Payton to pull him over. He's making me go to his vehicle. Calm down, you're on camera. I don't He almost wrecked your truck, so I'm checking. I, I, I did. Here, step over here. You put your hand down. What? Where are you headed to? I, I guess that I'm going to Little Rock. And, What's uh, that? I wanted to stop a night here. Okay. And, but I'm going to Little Rock. Humphrey, the son of a retired Pulaski County Circuit Court judge, immediately called his father after being pulled over. I do want to stay here. I just, Daddy, I, was, I missed the turn, and now I need to figure out how I get on back here to 81. I can hear instructions. Where are you coming from today? From Fayetteville. Oh, okay. What do you got, uh, what are you going to Little Rock for? You that's, live in Little Rock? That's where I live. Oh, okay. What's going on in Fayetteville? Uh, that's where I go to school. Oh, okay. Peyton paid no attention to the phone call and began questioning Humphrey, who appeared under pressure as he struggled to articulate his words. And my parents didn't want me to stay tonight because of COVID-19 and I'm going to be in the house. Uh, and staying in another place for two weeks. I can't move into that. Okay. I'm staying into another apartment near my parents. Why don't you just go all the way to Little Rock today? Because I, would, I can't move in tonight. You've been moving into Little Rock? Yes. Oh, I okay. can't go all the way tonight. I, I, I might just might. Okay. I just have to stay in a hotel. I thought it would be cheaper. So what's in here? You like your furniture and stuff? Everything. Seeing Humphrey's nervousness, Trooper Payton decided to address it directly, shifting the conversation completely to focus on Humphrey's state of mind. You still nervous? You still look nervous? I'm still nervous. Is there anything illegal in there or anything? Not at all. You got no guns or drugs? Anything in there. Okay. All right. Nothing to be nervous about. You're not even going to get a ticket. Okay. You're not. Get down. Yeah, super nervous. Hands trembling, voice is shaky. He's got his dad on the phone. I don't know why you wouldn't just go all the way to Little Rock from Fayetteville. 
While Humphrey did seem somewhat nervous, mere nervousness isn't sufficient for the officer to detain him or initiate an investigation. The officer must have a reasonable and articulable suspicion to justify pulling him over. Despite this, the officer continued with his questioning. That wrecked your truck back there. That's why I stopped you. Okay. That's a line back there. I didn't wreck it. I just you almost, I, I almost went into the exit. And I was like, I was like, I don't. Uh oh. That's. I think yeah. that's the right exit or not. Well, I've never stopped in my, Russellville. That's what they do. That's just my job. Make sure nobody gonna wreck out here. Okay, but now you're asking all these other questions. Yeah, because you're super nervous, so I'm trying to figure out why you're so nervous. Because it's a police. <laughs> the police. I don't get stopped. Humphrey's father, who had been on the call throughout, intervened and spoke to the officer. However, Officer Payton seemed to take offense to this. You say what, Dad? You say what? Can you speak with him? He's a lawyer. Okay, why does he need to speak to him? Because I, I just don't know why I'm stopped. I, I told you why you're stopped. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, you know, I'll I, talk to him. Okay, I'll take it back. I'm sorry, sir. You want me to talk to him or not? No, it's fine. I, are we? What, what do I need to do? Okay. Well, Goodbye. is there anything illegal here? Nothing. Nothing. Given the prevalence of videos on social media depicting police brutality, Humphrey's fear was understandable. However, at that moment, Peyton proposed something even more alarming, pushing Humphrey dangerously close to panic mode. No, I do. I, actually, I do. We can't. You do mine? Yes. Okay. What if I bring a dog out here? No, I can't do it. It's like, I just, you said it, it doesn't have anything to do with the potential wreck. Okay, so, so here's how it works. I get probable cause to stop you. I did that. When I get up here and make contact with you, you are super nervous. Your hands are shaking. They're still shaking. Your voice is shaky. So then that makes me suspicious that it's more than just a, you missed your exit. Humphrey was visibly terrified by Peyton's suggestion of bringing a K-9 over, and he even explained his reasons to the trooper, who showed no empathy towards his concerns. I want to talk to you, sir. Yeah, I, I... Okay. So if I bring a dog, is it going to alert on anything? Yeah, no, it's not going to alert on anything. I, I promise you. I just, I honestly just don't want to okay. get shy. Yeah, that's all, and I'm sorry about that. I, it just, okay. it happens. I know it happens. So, I, I honestly, you can, I don't want you to bring a dog because I don't think that's fair to me as a, as a citizen, as someone who, if the only thing I did was kind of like... The trooper presented Humphrey with two options, and Humphrey was clearly opposed to the idea of the canine unit being called to the scene, so he reluctantly agreed to the other option. However, he had no idea that Peyton would backtrack on this decision as well. If you don't want to bring a dog, just let me look in here real quick and I'll get you down the road. I don't have to bring a dog. I just think that's so invasive of my rights, but you can look in here if you like to. So no, I have a seat right there, I'm going to get a dog out here. No, I don't, I don't want, you can, I don't, you said just look, which is it just look with the dog. Right. I'm just going to get Daddy, what, can I talk to my dad now? I'm sorry, but I'm, you I'm want really me to talk dangerous. To him twice now. But can you talk to him in front of me? Because. I'm just really nervous now because I, I, I know I've done it. I'm, I'm 32 years old. You're a grown man. Yes, but they have. Every... Have you ever had any bad deals with the police? I haven't, honestly. The trooper called for a canine unit, and Humphrey was ordered to wait at the back of his U Haul. It took nearly 20 minutes for the canine unit to arrive, and the dog alerted to several spots on the U Haul. Humphrey was then instructed to sit in the back of a police cruiser. After the K-9 search, the officer hastily searched the U-Haul, inspecting both inside and around the vehicle for any signs of illegal activity. They even removed some road reflectors, suspecting illegal substance might be concealed inside them. Despite an hour-long search, no illegal items were found in the vehicle. Despite this lack of evidence, the trooper remained determined to prove Humphrey guilty, shifting his narrative to justify his earlier actions. The vehicle, the which is a rental, so it could possibly be that somebody had something in there before you picked it up. Is that not possible? You're not even getting a ticket, man. You're getting a warning. Mr. Humphrey was only given a warning for reckless driving and was then cleared to continue on his way. Later in March 2021, Humphrey filed a lawsuit against Peyton, alleging that he was stopped solely because of racial prejudice. 
The case went to trial, but it was later disclosed that Peyton settled with Humphrey for $335,000. Additionally, Peyton covered $232,500 in costs, which included attorney's fees. Despite the settlement, Mr. Humphrey remained dissatisfied as Peyton remained on the force. Trooper Peyton's actions were indeed troubling. On May 18, 2020, State Trooper Matthew Spina pulled over driver Kevin A. Jett after Jett allegedly passed him on Interstate 95 near New Haven while Spina was chasing another speeding vehicle. Hey, can I just ask you why you're riding their butt like that and speeding, man? I'm running his license plate because yeah. everybody else is speeding. Why are you speeding? I was only going 60. Speed limit's 40. 50. The signs. Okay. Bye bye. Do All right. A favor. Oh, give me the weed, too. No, I, I have a. Oh, I, oh, 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 yeah. I have no a medical shit. marijuana card. Step out. I have a card. Step out. All right, all right, stop, man. You want to run your mouth? No problem. You came the right guy. Step out. All Come right, on. all right, stop. Come on. Mr. Jett informed the trooper that the illegal substance he possessed was medically prescribed, but the trooper persisted in escalating the situation, resulting in a heated confrontation. Stop. See, the blue car yeah, which one? was tailing me yeah. while I was pacing a track to trailer looking for a motor vehicle violation because okay. the governor's office has gotten multiple complaints yeah. on traffic stops. I know. Okay? I know that. So we're out doing our thing. Okay. He decides to pass me and flip me off! All right, Spina, I'm sorry. Man. All right? The state trooper raised his voice at Kevin, appearing to be enraged because his supervisor had informed him that traffic violations were becoming too frequent. Who the f you think you are worried about what I'm doing? Okay. You're right. I know I'm right, God damn it! Now. Everyone's got something to fucking say! Mind your own goddamn business! You're fucking speeding! How about I start with that? No shit. I was following that kid for a reason, and if you hadn't done that stupid stunt, I'd be with him right now. But no, you just couldn't leave it alone, could you? You had to be a fucking American. Once again, the officer can be observed blaming Mr. Jett for his alleged wrongdoings, when in reality, Mr. Jett may have only warranted a ticket for speeding and could have been allowed to continue on his way. God help you if there's anything illegal in this car. Is it in the original dispensary container? What? It's broke. Is it in the original dispensary container? No. Then you're f How's that sound? No sh Mind your own f business next time. Yeah, it's called shut the f up. I was driving along, I was gonna head to a simple citation that I keep, but no! You gotta be uh, just couldn't f shut your mouth. Where are you going anyway? Where do you work? Where? What's that? It's a paper? Yeah, you know, like the liquor bottles and stuff that the, the shit comes in, like the trays. I promise you, I only have weed in the car. Honestly, goodness. And it's all right here in my club box. At this point, the trooper's anger may have clouded his judgment, causing him to speak without considering the consequences for this innocent man. But even so... This ought to tell you why our department is having 1300 as 850 right now. There's a clue to the public. What a bunch of assholes you are. Right there. You want it on paper or not? Is it in the original dispensary container? No sh Turn around! be on your way! Don't you ever me again! Following this incident, State Trooper Matthew Spina was placed on leave as the incident gained millions of views worldwide. It's surprising that Officer Spina displayed such a lack of self-control and crossed these boundaries. The Monroe County Sheriff dismissed a corrections officer named Mitchell after a physical conflict with an inmate, Marcus Ford, on January 31st. The unedited body camera footage made public by the sheriff's office showed the incident during Ford's transfer from a holding cell to a medical observation cell. 
The altercation, involving Mitchell among other correctional officers, was sparked by Ford's reported health concerns. And his medical... For your safety, for our safety, I'm ordered to go in there. Do you understand? I'm going to teach you to walk out of here go in there. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? I'm going to order you to step out of here, go into our room. Okay? You're going on medical observation. Go in your jumpsuit, step right here. Touch me. Go in your jumpsuit, step right here. Touch me. I'll put that on. God! Ford strongly resisted and made threats of violence against the officers. The soul's all touch me is going down. That's all I'm saying. Right? I done took on three, four, and five. Soul's you touch me is going down. Y'all better not fight. Going on medical observation? No. I can't go on observation. I've been to the hospital, period. Why would you sit me in a room? It's not my no, no. You better call medical and tell them no. Because yeah. I'm not going in that room. Yeah, I'm not going in that room. I'm not going in the room. That's all you have to say is take him back to A block. Listen. Take him back to A block. Not no. You yeah. have to go no, in there. No, I don't. No, I don't. No. Based on how cooperative you are, no. you might go back earlier. When? The only man I'm in. No. No, it's fine. It's only 90. I just said I'm feeling really dizzy. And you're going to call him and tell him, no, let him go back to the unit. And my mom just died too. Well, I don't in. want one of y'all to touch me. Listen, while you're in here, go get a phone call and shower. No. I don't want no sign, I want to do it my I don't need you. No. Here. So I'll tell you, you I ain't going to... Because I didn't tell you that it's only 90 over 80. No. I ain't going to no room like that, dog. Despite spending several minutes trying to negotiate, Ford continued to be uncooperative, warning the officers repeatedly that he would harm them if they tried to move him by force. I ain't going to no room. No. I won't want y'all to come in this room. Ford, sit back here. No. You have to go to medical station. No, nope, I'm not. It's going to jump seat. No. Sit right here. No. So all you have to say is going back to the unit. Send me back to the unit no other time. My 111. Going back to the unit. Do you understand? What I'm talking about. Do you understand? You've been held that multiple times. No, multiple times. I've been to the hospital. They still sell me back to the But you still want to sit there in the room? No. As soon as you come in here, it's going down. I saw my mama. I'm a big gangster. Or we don't I want you to step out here and step in here because it's in the camera pants. You can go watch you get knocked out. Ford, you don't realize if this happens, you're going to go on SSP and you're not going to be able to call your family SSP, at all. I'm, go, I'm leaving it. You know, getting more charges will keep you here longer. Charges? What you going to press charges? You yeah. sucker. Step what you going to press charges? Soft. Step out here. No, I told you I'm not going in that room. Ford, step out here. As soon as you step in here, it's going down. Ford. Step out here. So you step in here, it's going up. I'd have been to the I'd have During the altercation, Mitchell got hurt and ended up with a split lip after being hit in the mouth. Mitchell continued to punch Ford aboard until stopped by another officer intervening. Okay. Right here, guys. Yeah, you're gonna have to pull it away because we're gonna have to walk into it. Here. Roll it back further. Okay, we're good. We're good. All right. The officers managed to further restrain Ford by securing him to a chair, using excessive force as he continued to complain about being injured. Why are y'all chaining me up? You assaulted staff. Yep. You're breaking my arm. You're breaking my arms. Hold on, hold on. Can I just... Can I just adjust it? Afterwards, they strapped him onto a stretcher to take him to the hospital for medical attention as he was visibly in pain and squirming. I'm still in sleep. Hey, get up, ready? One, two, three, get up. Get up. Okay. Get up. Do that carefully. Oh, yeah, sure. Here, let me move this. Sorry. All right, four to one. Four okay. minutes, sit backwards, okay? Hold backwards. Take a seat. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on. Why are you putting me in this here? Again? You insulted an officer, multiple officers. I didn't insult none, it was 401. How am I insulting the officers? But they put right. me in this here and I'm it there. We're leaning forward. Listen, we're leaning forward. They're going to take out the handcuffs. Wait. 
take them off. Put your hands right there. Uh, Sound good? I'm done fighting. Lean forward. Because it's fine. It's four one. Okay, we're just going to put your hands in here, okay? Lean forward. Lean forward. Which one are you doing? Lean forward. Left cuff. Left cuff. Straight. Go ahead and tighten it. After the incident, Sheriff Marte started an internal review and also asked the Indiana State Police to carry out an independent investigation to see if there were any criminal actions during the conflict. In the end, Mitchell was fired for not moving to nonviolent methods and not lessening the need for force. Mitchell made a clear mistake and acted impulsively when dealing with the inmate, especially after being told to leave the area. In an encounter that started off calm, Seattle police officer Martin Harris approached a man, stating he had been called to the scene due to a reported disturbance. When another officer arrived, he sought the perspective of a random woman nearby who denied seeing any wrongdoing. So we did get a call about this gentleman. Uh, somebody thought he was suspicious. I don't know, he's been yelling and stuff, I think, you know, just to... Do you, you guys know each other? No. Oh. I literally just walked up and was like, hey man, I need power, you know, for my phone or whatever. I've only been here a couple minutes, like I said. I literally just got here. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. And, um, but you're slurry, nasty alcohol. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, come on, buddy. We'll get our phone. We'll come back. Officer Harris decided to make the situation more tense by making aggressive demands. The person Officer Harris was dealing with could tell that the officer had been drinking. Although the person was encouraged to stay calm, the situation became more heated as Officer Harris's behavior grew more forceful. Here, welcome back. His I don't think you're going to fit through there. He can't stand straight without holding himself. He is drunk. Look at him. Walk a straight line, sir. Stop slurring your words. ID, please. No, sir. ID. Gee, you're drunk. Officer Harris turned to using physical force, ordering the victim to open his hands and accusing him of being combative. Despite the victim's pleas for a peaceful resolution, Officer Harris's aggression escalated, leading to a violent confrontation. I can spell that. Someone ID. ID. Get the ID. Get off. ID. Get off. Relax. Get off. Get off. You have no rights. You're being recorded. No rights. I don't get the rights. The situation got out of hand when the officer tried to arrest the victim using too much force, ignoring the victim's request to back off. The victim was roughly handled and forcefully held down, even though he didn't seem to pose any real threat. The opportunity to speak with our supervisor, but you need to cooperate right now. Okay, you need to cooperate. Don't hit me! Don't kick me! Officer Martin Harris is being charged with assault for what he did during this illegal arrest. The victim's rights were violated, and Officer Harris has to deal with the results of his dishonest actions. In this upsetting incident, Deputy Ronald Thurston had a tense and aggressive confrontation with someone who appeared to deny any involvement in an earlier event from February. You had an incident that happened um, back in February. No, that was me. It wasn't you. Bro, come on, baby, get off me, bro. Hey. Hey. Come on, baby, get off me, bro. Deputy Thurston quickly escalated to using physical force in his attempt to detain the individual. He ordered the person to get on the ground, threatening to shoot if the commands were not followed. Get on the ground! 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 Even though the individual followed the orders, Deputy Thurston kept using too much force. He hit the person and forcefully brought him down showing a worrying lack of control throughout the incident. You stupid, man. You stupid. You stupid. You move. I'm telling you that. Stand up. Put your hand behind your bike. Put the other hand behind your bike. Put the other hand behind your bike. Now you're going to jail. Now you're going to jail. You think I'm a play toy? I look like a play toy? I'm a man. That's what happened when you with a man. Ain't no all right. No, you can't get up. You can't get up. You can't get up. Good. No, you can't. Despite the individual being cooperative, Deputy Thurston subjected him to further unnecessary aggression by banging the victim's head against the cruiser. These actions clearly show a blatant disregard for de-escalation techniques and the expected standards of conduct in law enforcement. 
Hey, I'm bleeding. Put on some love. My, I'm bleeding. My hands bleeding. Yeah, I'm good. Sheriff Gregory Tony took firm action by firing Deputy Ronald Thurston over the incident of excessive force with a disarmed suspect in 2020. This termination highlights the importance of accountability in law enforcement and sends a strong message that such wrongdoing will not be accepted. In a concerning event from 2015, Austin police officers Brian Roar and Patrick Spradlin were investigated following a violent arrest that was recorded by a dash cam. Man, take a seat back in the car, please. Take a seat back in your vehicle, please. Okay, man, we're being pulled over right now, so I need to take a seat back in the car. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am, I'm not joking. During a standard stop for speeding, Bray and King complied with Officer Rowar's request for her ID. However, without any clear provocation, Officer Rowar suddenly and forcefully slammed Bray on King to the ground. This incident raised significant worries about the unnecessary use of force. This is your driver's license, you're being stopped for speeding. But I'm already stopped, so technically can you stop me? Because yes, you didn't pull me over because I'm parked. You only talk, ma'am, you were about to go inside without a wallet, so I know you're only coming here because you know I was coming to pull you over. Mm -hmm. I can absolutely stop you if you've already parked, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is your driver's license. All right, take a seat back in your car so we can close the door. Mm -hmm. Put your feet back in the car so I can close the door. Please. Okay, ma'am, stand up for me, okay? okay. No. no, why are you kidding me? Stop oh my God! Stop oh my God! Stop resisting! Oh God. Stop resisting! Um, what is the Stop resisting! What are you? Stop resisting right now! Get out of the car! I'm getting out. Let me get out. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. Get out of the car now! Get after looking at the footage, prosecutors decided to drop the charge of resisting arrest against King. They highlighted that there was no good reason for the arrest and pointed out the excessive force used by Officer Ro R. It's my job to deal with him, and I know it's probably going to go ugly, but that's the way it goes. Again, I'm not going to do it because of their appearance and whatnot. Some of them are very intimidating. Could we have a wonder? Could we quite possibly? I'm not saying, by no means am I saying that there is no racism, mm -hmm. because I know there is, and everybody knows there is. And, you know, I can throw that car just as easy as everybody else can. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do me any good. Chief Art Aito acted quickly by taking Roe R and Spradlin off duty for an internal review. Officer Roe R was eventually fired because of another complaint about excessive force. Additionally, the Austin City Council approved a settlement of $425,000 in Brain King's case. On May 15, 2023, a simple traffic stop by Officer Clemens in Logan Township, New Jersey, quickly became complicated. Officer Clemens stopped a car because its license plate was hard to see. This all happened right outside the place where the driver worked, adding to the tension of the situation. Hello. How are you? Hello, I'm Officer Clemens to Logan Township Police Department. Do you have a license registration insurance? Uh, I'm on my license number. I thought I broke my license. Okay. But I was I got my license. That's no problem. What should I get stopped for again? Uh, so that plate cover on the back. So you can't have a tinted plate cover. The frame is fine, but the plate, it makes it difficult for the plate to see, so that is not allowed. While Officer Clemens was dealing with the issue of the obstructed license plate, a co-worker of the driver, who was just standing nearby on public property without saying anything, caught her attention. Despite the co-worker's silence, Officer Clemens believed that the man was shouting at her. Hello? I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop. I wanna stop. Yeah, I understand that, that's fine, but I wanna stop. If you could just go back over there, please. You know who this guy is? Yeah, I know who he is. What's his name? Uh, oh, you gotta ask him. You don't know his name? I can't. I mean, I, 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 I can't do that. Yeah, some dude just walked up to my stop and told me that he's going to uh, beat me up. What began as a straightforward traffic stop for an obstructed license plate soon escalated into a chaotic and tense confrontation. Sir, you need to go back inside. Yeah, you need to go back inside. Let's go. I want to stop. I 
I'm okay. The driver's being cooperative. I patched him, but uh, this now is kind of just lingering, yelling at me. All right, copy. You guys are good. Good morning. I'm sorry. Could you go back over there? I want to stop. It'll be two seconds. I just came. I'm your supervisor. I just came to see. He works here. Yeah, I understand. I'll, and I'll be I'm clear with him in two seconds. Problems, and then I'm just asking you, is, is, is everything? Yeah, going? everything's fine, and I'll be clear in two seconds. Can I ask you what he stopped for? Yeah, he was stopped for the plate cover. When backup officers arrived at the scene, instead of calming things down, their presence only made the situation more intense. No, my name is Mark. I'm on the I just came to check on my employee. That's it. Yeah, that's be, first she off, explained. No, first, yeah, first off, man, I did walk up. And, no, I didn't walk. She wasn't talking about oh, me. Okay. She called about Yeah, what's, and what's, what's your deal, man? Stop. Yeah, yeah but you don't, need to be, you don't need to be flapping your gums at all. The male co-worker, who was simply standing on public property and exercising his right to free speech, ended up in conflict with the officers. This confrontation ultimately resulted in his arrest. I live here. I got you. I'm going to speak to him. Now you're under arrest. Now you're under arrest. Now, now you're under arrest. Turn around. Turn around. Don't touch me. 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 Don't no, oh, get off me. Yeah, yeah. Stop putting my arm. Get my boss, yo. Just watch her back. Get now. my f***ing boss, bro. So I asked you why you were flapping your gums at us. And your response, to me, you your response to me was suck my d***. Okay, you talking about your boss right after my gums. So now you're I'm under arrest. I'm checking with my forward. Well, now you're under arrest. Okay. For using the words you had to use in front of everybody. I want to talk to my boss. No. Nope. Bro, you want to kill me. No. I want to talk to my boss. It's good. Oh. Yo, yo, relax. Yo, 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 yo. yo. It's not worth it, man. It's not oh, worth it. I'm trying to it's relax. Not worth it. My phone not even on me. It's That's not worth it. Relax. The individual who was arrested ended up facing a daunting five charges, a result of the police's excessive force outside the driver's place of work. The way things escalated pointed to an overreaction, sparking doubts about how fair the treatment of the suspects was. In the end, all charges against him were dismissed, and he proceeded to file a lawsuit. The situation began on July 17th, when Lamar Bell was stopped by Illinois State Police, who suspected him of being involved in an illegal substance deal at a gas station. The officer's aggressive approach from the start made Lamar fear that he had been caught by the police. Keep your hands up there. Keep your hands up in the Keep your hands up in the roof. What's your deal? Shut the car off. Shut the car off. Thank you, man. What's your deal? I'm scared. What are you What are you scared of? Give me your key. Where's your key at? Give it to me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, why are you Why are you doing what you're doing? I know you saw me drive past the gas station, and you pull out and you start just ripping everywhere. The officers told Lamar to roll down his windows and turn off the car. As they noticed some movement inside, the situation became more tense with Lamar looking visibly upset. Hop out. Don't reach for anything. Hey, hey you? Hey. That's, that's, that's the kind of that, that gets you scared, right? I'm just Get saying. the out. Hey. out. Come on back here. You got anything on you? All right, put your hands up top. Actually, just, just chill out. Just chill out. Because you're doing weird shit. You're doing some shit that normal people don't do. I most definitely do. Stand over here. I don't have nothing on me, man. Okay, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. The officers questioned Lamar about substances they found in his car. He denied ingesting anything, claiming he had just bought the items. The situation intensified when the officers found out about Lamar's shocking action. Okay, you got anything in your car? No guns, no nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing. Okay, what were you reaching back to the back seat for? Because I got stuff that I bought, tissue and all that stuff. And so you needed a tissue and I told you to get no, out of the car? I got all that stuff, like tissue and... and what, I'm finna show you. I don't, I don't need you to show me. I don't need you to show me. In the back, the, the stuff they probably stole. Okay. Well, like I'll be buying. You missed one of the pieces of tissue on your seat, which is not tissue. Come on over here. I'd like to know what he's reaching for back here. 
or what he was about to reach for. Oh, there's the rest of it. In the toilet paper, well, more of it. I think. Does that look like a bunch of little individual bags like crack? Oh, yeah. Okay. Leave that contained back here for now. They seem wet. They don't know why. Maybe you put them in his mouth and then spit them out. Because when I first came up to him... Oh, he ate all this. So, like you said, it feels he, I bet he chewed it all off and ate it all. What are you doing? Nothing, man. God damn. Huh? Nothing. I ain't doing man. My hands hurt. Hey, man, I'm I'm this this way. Way. The situation grew more serious when the officers read Lamar his Miranda rights. All right, I'm going to read you a Miranda word. Are you okay? Do you know what that is? Miranda rights. Are you familiar? Sir? Before I ask any questions, it's my duty to advise you of your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Uh, yes. Okay. With those rights in mind, do you wish to speak with me about what's in the in the baggies? The white baggies that was under you while you were sitting on your seat. And the, and the ones that were wet in the, uh, in the toilet paper packaging. Do you want to talk to me about those? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Yes, so we can talk about it. We can talk about it. What's up? Okay, what is that substance in there? Cocaine. Okay, how much of it did you consume while I was trying to stop you? Charles, no, no, no. Because all those little baggies are wet and they have residue in them, but they're empty. Right. So residue. did you try to eat them? Why would I eat some coke? Be. To get rid of it, to destroy evidence. Okay, so you didn't do that? They were just no. wet, wet on their own? No. Lamar started behaving very strangely, which caught the officer's attention. He begged for an ambulance, saying he had taken a lot of something. It seems like you've got something going on right now because you were not like this a little bit ago. Is that all it is, is cocaine to your knowledge? Yes. Cocaine, that's it. Okay. Oh, these handcuffs hurt. How much was in there? What you mean, like three bags I just bought. You just bought? Yeah. Okay. So it's yours? Mm, I just bought them. Okay. Who'd you buy him from? I don't know. Is he a white call, guy, call black guy? Call the ambulance. Call the ambulance, man. For what? Cause I call the ambulance. For what? Call the ambulance, man. What do you need? I call the ambulance, please. What do you need it for? The call, hey, we have to give him a reason. The ambulance. I swallowed some cocaine and they're not calling the ambulance. Call the ambulance, man. Okay, relax. Call the ambulance. Hey, call the ambulance, please. Call the ambulance. Why do you need an ambulance? Hey, I swallowed some cocaine a lot. Okay. Call the ambulance. Alarmingly, Lamar's condition got worse, but despite the urgent need, the officers didn't call an ambulance right away. I need the hospital for us, swear to God. I need the hospital for, hey, call the ambulance. Call the ambulance, please. Hey, call the ambulance. Why are you screaming? Call the ambulance. You just I swear to God, call the ambulance. I swear to God, this is the, call the ambulance. I Okay, we're gonna shut the door and let you relax here for a minute, Hold okay? On, please don't. Please. I swear to God. You need to relax. I swear to God. Call the hey, hey. Call Stop. the ambulance. Hey, Get the ambulance. Stop. Hey. I need the ambulance. Okay. I Stop. need the ambulance, Stop. please. When the ambulance arrived, the paramedics attempted to assess Lamar, but it was too late. He claimed he couldn't feel his heart. Nonetheless, they rushed him to the hospital for treatment. Lamar Bell's family has voiced their frustration with the officers in action, especially as Lamar pleaded for medical help. His passing has sparked debates about how the officers manage the situation and the responsibility they should shoulder. The family is calling for clear answers and accountability, stressing the importance of a detailed inquiry into the circumstances of his unfortunate death. On July 1, 2023, what started as a routine traffic stop in Cleveland over an expired tag escalated dramatically, resulting in a display of excessive force by the police. The incident, marked by the harsh arrest of a driver who was initially cooperative, ignited significant anger and concern within the community. What's up, man? All right. Hey, come here, man. Don't do this. Don't do this. Please, 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 sir. Please, sir. Please, sir. When the officers approached the vehicle, they alleged that the driver was resisting. However, the body cam footage tells a different story, showing a discrepancy between the officers' claims and what actually happened. 
The event caused a lot of anger in the community because the cops actually sat on the man, making it hard for him to breathe. Get back. I can't breathe. The man was obviously upset, and the incident left a lasting mark on him. Despite asking to be taken to the hospital, the cops ignored him and instead got more forceful, which was a bad move on their part. You got uh, 32 to supervise me? I got a supervisor. I gotta go to the hospital. Where's the kid? I'm at the overdose. I'm at the overdose. Please, you're gonna be alright. I'm not. You're gonna be alright. Stay safe. Oh my god. Please, no. Oh my god. Stay here, dude. No. Yeah, yeah. Shut up, I can't, man. Just relax. I got a lot going on. You're gonna be I'm gonna die. Just kill me. Off. No. no. Stop. No. No. The man was mentally hurt by the way the cops treated him. His screams of pain were really intense. Oh. Oh. Jordan, stand up, dude. They're gonna lift up on your arm. Eventually, the cops put the man in the cruiser to take him away. As of November 2023, the officers involved are being investigated, underscoring the need to tackle problems with using too much force and making sure police are held accountable. On August 25, 2019, officers from the Worcester Police Department went to a church to deal with a problem about who had the right to be with a child. A serious argument started between the officers and two people named Joseph Rizzuti and Joseph Rizzuti Jr. Who are you? Who are you? Why don't you go inside? You have nothing about it. Oh, inside. that's my daughter. So okay. yeah, I do have a lot to do with it. Yeah. Okay, so you, know, you don't have to. It has nothing to do with you. You done yelling? You done yelling? Are you done yelling? You're acting like a big shot. We're all set here. You can go inside. Yeah, no, you go on. Joseph Rizzuti Jr. got really upset and called one of the officers a tyrant, making things worse. One officer followed Joseph Rizzuti Jr. into the church and used a taser on him, which scared and upset many people watching. You're not going to tell me what to do. You can go inside. You're about to be arrested for disturbing the peace. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Joseph Rizzuti Jr. was then arrested forcefully, causing a lot of noise and panic from the crowd. A woman who was just asking the officers what was happening got handcuffed too, even though it wasn't clear why, making everyone even more upset. Stop yelling! Stop yelling! Relax! Let go of me! You're hurting my wrist! Let go of me! Listen, buddy! Let go of me! Let go of me. Let go of me. I'm gonna sue this so you know. I want a, I want a, I want a real cop here. A supervisor. I want a supervisor. Oh, now you're gonna pull me up. Now you're gonna pull me up. You can't yeah, pull you me up. up. Guys, just now you want to get up. Yeah, she's pregnant, officer. I can't even believe what these guys just did in this church house. Yeah, we need to get him up in the gym. I think I was literally so caught off guard by everything that happened that I wasn't. I was, yeah, I was like, it was crazy. My mom's the one right there with the people couldn't believe what the police were doing, and someone mentioned that one of the people arrested was expecting a baby. Later on, all the serious charges against the people arrested were dropped because they were found not guilty. There's no information on whether the officers were disciplined. The whole event was very upsetting for everyone at the church and made people question if the police acted right. On May 9, 2021, in University City, Missouri, Sergeant Larry Beaton from the local police department stopped and forcefully detained two young people who were just walking by. This happened after one of them supposedly made a rude hand gesture at his police car. You guys live over here? Free speech is a, is a first amendment. Oh, absolutely. Right. But do you live over here? Yeah. Okay, let me see your ID. I need to see your guys' no, ID. Thanks. What, what car are we okay. expecting? Okay, you guys are aimlessly walking out around here? We're not aimlessly walking out. So no, I, we I do need this all the time. Sergeant Beaton asked them for their IDs, saying their aimless walking seemed suspicious to him. The two argued they were just taking a walk in their own neighborhood. Since Sergeant Beaton didn't really have a solid reason to search them, he started making up excuses, trying to scare them into showing their IDs by threatening to arrest them. Even without a good reason, Sergeant Beaton detained them, searched them, and handcuffed them 
claiming they were acting suspiciously. Okay, do you live over here? Yes, I live in this neighborhood. I okay, I need, like I need, I need to get no, your ID from you. No, Give me your name. All right. No, thank you. Have no, it, it's, it's not an option. I'm going to keep you, walking. No, no, you're being detained right now. Both of you guys are being what? detained what? for a suspicious activity. You're aimlessly what? walking around. How? I need to see We're your ID. I don't have my ID, I'm sir. Okay, sir, s- step over here for a second. I need to see your ID. Your you're being detained right what's now. Your, okay. um, what's your name and badge number? That's not my name is right here. Okay. I need I need What's to see your number? I need to see your ID. Oh, no, you need to give me some ID. It's not it's not an option. Or I will take you to the station and get your ID. So, you, I, is this because I flicked you off? No, no. You're aimlessly walking I'm around here. I came from my house. Okay. Smoke, okay. 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 I'm gonna put house, you in handcuffs right now. Go ahead and stand up. And you go ahead and resist if you want to. I'm not. What? You're being detained. Can you video? Okay, have a seat. Do you have anything that's going to stick me? No. That's my wall. If you really want my ID, you got that. Have a seat. Go ahead and stand up for me, sir. Do you have any weapons on you? No. I'm going to pat you down for weapons. Dude, we came to smoke a cigarette. Okay. I, I came from my house. My friend worked at Walgreens. Okay, you're aimlessly walking around. There's been a lot of stuff that's going on around here. The situation got more tense as the young people insisted the police had no right to stop and question them like that without any real suspicion. Sergeant Beaton kept saying he had the right to do this, although that claim was shaky from a legal standpoint. Got a fragile ego, bro. All because I f***ed you off. No, that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. That, 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 why is that of your concern? It might be disrespectful. No, I'm not concerned about that. Stop you, me. You can do whatever you want to do, young man, but at the That's same exactly time... That's what I was doing. Yeah, stop but me. You aimlessly walking around here. I'm going to know... I, I want to know... I want to know... Purpose. Listen, listen to me. I'm letting you talk. Let, let me talk. Let me explain to you. We have every right to stop you to find out who you are and where you live. And you, and you still... You're still yeah. talking. Yeah, because you guys are pieces of... For stopping oh. people who want to go on a, to break for a cigarette because I flicked you off, that now all of a sudden I'm acting suspicious. If I would have not flicked you off and we would have kept walking, you would have never, this stop never would have happened. You would have never accused me of doing suspicious things. After a bit of arguing, with one of the young people especially challenging Sergeant Beaton's behavior, they were finally let go. Sergeant Beaton didn't take any more action after that. Later, one of the young people filed a complaint against Sergeant Larry Beaton and the police department took some kind of corrective action in response. On February 1, 2023, Officer Shib Munda of the Orlando Police Department encountered Isaiah Payne, a 31-year-old, without being called to a specific incident. Munda approached Payne over suspicions of substance-related activity. Easy or hard? Don't f***ing move. 51 in North Lane, negative 45. Where are y'all following This quickly led to a physical struggle. Munda warned Payne to stop digging around, fearing he was reaching for something potentially dangerous or illegal. The situation escalated, with Munda using his baton on Payne. Body camera footage showed the intense encounter and Munda's orders for Payne to comply. I saw you. I saw you banging. I got a weed card, though. Give me a 44. I got a weed card, sir. I got a whole weed card. Don't move. You understand me? Don't fucking move. Stop digging around while I'm going to put you to the ground. The officers then forced Payne to the ground, concerned he might be trying to dispose of evidence. At one point, fearing Payne had ingested something that could lead to an opioid overdose, they administered Narcan, a medication for reversing opioid effects. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Stop digging! Don't move! You understand me? Give me your hands! Give me your hands! Give me your other hand. Stop chewing. Stop chewing. Payne's condition worsened, and after losing consciousness, officers gave him a second Narcan dose in an effort to save him. Slow down. Slow down. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Slow down. Miss, look at me. Sit up. All right, chef. All right. Let's play. Okay. Relax. 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 Breathe. Come on. Come on. You good? There you go. Relax. You good? Relax. Someone got additional Narcan? Yeah. 
I gave him one shot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're helping you, bro. He's, not, he's, he's still good. Free. He's good? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think he's good. No, I don't want to hit this. Come on, come on, come on. Talk to us. Talk to us. Talk to me. Okay, I got it. Okay. 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 Give him another shot. Despite their attempts, Payne was declared dead on the scene. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement is investigating Payne's death, and the involved officers were placed on paid administrative leave as the investigation continues. On June 1, 2023, Sean was doing a First Amendment check at the 75th Police Station in Brooklyn, New York, and the situation became very tense. We're going to affect change together, um, ladies and gentlemen. You can't be reported in here. Hi, ma'am. How are you? Can I get your name and badge number, please? Is there a problem with us recording in the precinct? Because we have the law right here that says that we are, are specifically allowed to record in the precinct. So this is the sign that they're always referring to. What do you think holds more weight, ladies and gentlemen? This sign, members of the public are prohibited from audio video recording or photography inside this facility or the actual law? Let's find out. In these audit videos, it's common for cops and government workers to rely more on what the signs around the building state rather than the actual law. As a result, our rights to record in these public buildings are often denied. Hey, how you doing? Can I? Can, I'm going to actually step out. Can I please speak to a supervisor? First, you're gonna have to step I have a law right here. You want to take a look at it? Have to step out for me. Please don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch. Don't touch me. A bunch of officers forcefully enter through the front doors and start pushing Sean outside right away, even as he shows them the law. Don't touch me. Right Don't touch me. Don't right touch me. Hey, get off, me. Get, off right, get, get off of me. Get off of me. Get off of me. Read the law that says right, I have the right to do it. Now You're a law enforcement officer. Read outside. the law. It fell over there. I'm going inside where I have the right to record. I do. I have the right to record. I'm not. Nope. I'm not trespassing. Now I'm not know, trespassing. Now you're outside, so no, I'm not, I'm not trespassing in a building that I pay right, for so either. There was why no not? reason. For, why'd you put your hands on because me that I way? You to leave. My paper is there. That right, doesn't right, mean you can put your hands on me. Let me speak to a supervisor. Let me speak to a supervisor. Step out for me. Please don't touch me. 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 Don't touch Actually, there are 21 states where police aren't even required to learn de-escalation techniques. Property. Right, I want my right, property. Right, so step out, let go of the door. My property's right, inside so this building. My property's inside this building. My property's inside this building. Grab me my pop, grab me my property. You guys are out of control. Look at the law. Look at the law. Look at the law. Look at the law. I'm not resisting. Put your hands behind back. Look at the wall. Stop resisting. All right, so put your hands behind your back. All right, so put your hands behind your back. You were looking for this. I was looking for what? This, this interaction. I was looking for you to take. Sean keeps going back into the building to film, ready to face the risk of arrest and rough treatment by dishonest police to bring attention to the issue. Freedom? Why would I want you to take away my freedom for it? Why would I want you to take away my freedom for it? Ridiculous. Read the law. Read the law. You don't like cameras, ma'am? As Sean gets arrested and removed without proper cause, his cameraman is also blocked from entering the building. The police claimed they arrested him for trespassing, but it was really an excuse to seize his camera and halt his recording. However, New York law defends the public's right to film in police station lobbies. I'm not causing a ruckus by, by peacefully recording. That's not causing a ruckus. For what reason? For what lawful reason, sir? What lawful reason? Sir, I came here with, you guys are law enforcement officers, I came here with a law. I came here with a law to show you, and you don't want to see the law. None of you. One, two, three, four, five, six different law enforcement. I have a right to record by New York State and New York City law. New York State and New York City law gives me the right to record. No, it doesn't. Read the law, it's laminated right there for you. Sean faced charges of obstructing governmental administration, criminal trespass, and trespass. He fought these charges in court and shared an update on February 2, 2024. In the end, the judge ruled all charges against Sean to be baseless. Every charge was dismissed, marking a victory for him. Moreover, 
the judge directed the NYPD to uphold the laws that permit the public to film in public lobbies and demanded the removal of any signs suggesting otherwise. This individual was simply filming in the New Elling City Hall in South Carolina, a part of the building that was open to the public, asserting his right to be there. Despite this, a police officer approached him, asking him to leave. Contrary to respecting the individual's rights, the officer seemed determined not to allow the situation to resolve peacefully. Exit the building. No, thank you. Not right now. I'm not, as soon as I'm done. Come on, sir. Uh, please. Excuse me. Please. Excuse me. Please Let's exit, touch please. Me. Please don't touch me. Let's exit, please. Please do not touch me. Let's exit. Please don't touch me. Let's exit, please, sir. Can I, can I sir, have your badge number? I'm Chief Middleton. Okay. My badge number is 200. Okay. okay. So why are you, you can please exit. putting your hands on me? I'm going to exit you out of the building. Okay. No, you're okay. not. First I'm not assaulting right you. Now. I'm not doing anything. I want to escort you out of the building. You didn't. You didn't no, I did not assault you. Okay. No, I did not. So assault comes with any type of aggressive behavior. No, that's. I grabbed your arm and did this. did not assault Just like this. Let's go. That's unnecessary okay. battery. Sir, please, exit our building. This is enough. No, thank you. The Constitution allows for the filming in public areas using visible equipment, like a camera or a phone. Despite this, Officer Middleton was intent on confronting the man, a choice that might very well have repercussions for him later on. Okay. I'm I, I didn't say a word to you. You came up to me and put your what, hands on what me. Is your, what is your agenda here? What is my agenda? That's right. What are you doing? I need to tell you. You say you were doing history. So you record that, record that, that's you can go to the library. I need to give you. Already. Okay. That's already more information than I need to give you. Okay. Sir, you're making this more difficult than what it is. And so are you okay. at the very same time. No, it's not. All right. <laughs> no, it's if not. If you don't mind, I would like for you to exit this building. I do. I already okay. told you that like four times. All right. Even though the man explained he was there just for educational reasons, Officer Middleton became aggressive with him. You under arrest? Sir, 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 he, sir. Sir, now you're trespassing I, okay. on public property. Look, <laughs> trespassing on, prob on yes, public. Yes, I gave property. you. I gave trespassing you. on public property. Do you guys see this? You guys see this? I gave you plenty of opportunities, sir. He's gonna go on the outside. It'll be fun for you. <laughs> and then you're gonna leave. No, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I ain't going anywhere. I'm gonna step right back in as soon as you take these cuffs off of me because you know you're making a mistake right now. You know you're making a mistake. I asked you to exit, and you did not exit. Look, this is going to be a le illegal search and seizure. Right? It's not a legal search and seizure. Oh, why is that? Because I don't have to search you. you. Sir, you because I detained you. How can a public citizen be detained for trespassing on public property? This situation seems to involve the officer improvising legal grounds as he proceeded with his duties. Yet the individual in question stood his ground firmly, not easily swayed. Maria, I'm a lot this building. You got the key? You got the key? Back up, please, sir. No, thank you. We're For closed. What? No, you're not. Back up. No, you're not. Back you're up, not sir. Closed. No, thank you. We're not playing this. I'm no, not playing I, this I, with I, you. No. Back up, sir. No, please, you can't put your foot there. Not, sir, you cannot not put, put your, your foot on. there to restrict Dude, you are, can, Congratulations, sir, please. sir. Hey, I just want to tell you something. Congratulations. You just earned the state of South Carolina a humongous lawsuit. Sir, humongous. please. Humongous. Clearly, the officer isn't concerned with upholding the law, as he blatantly misleads the individual despite the visible open sign at the window. Going to the extent of locking up an entire public building just to make a point is petty and demeaning. Yet, unfortunately, it's not shocking behavior. You can call me a good citizen. Okay, and what is your purpose here within the city of New Ellington? Well, as of right now, I'm talking to you. Okay, so you're talking to me. Detained. Okay. With handcuffs on. You're in trouble. Okay. And you know it. That's fine. And you know it. That's fine. It almost seems as if the officer can predict what will happen next. Indeed, at this juncture, the officer detained the individual a second time after he re-entered the building. This situation clearly demonstrates that it has become a confrontation between a cop and a citizen, rather than a cop dealing with a criminal. A uh, gentleman here in the office who wants to record. So people, he knows. <laughs> and I've told him several times to get out of my building. He is claiming that he has the right to come in here and record. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, at the police department. Congratulations, my friend. That's sad that you do not know your own laws as a chief. Uh -huh. As a chief, you are f***ed. You are f***ed, my friend. You're dismissed as well. I'm going to walk away now. 
Once Officer Middleton recognized that the individual might actually have a point, he unexpectedly shifted the situation against himself. Gotcha. Stop touching okay. me right well, now. Well, I'd undetain him and we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, undetain. Dude, you better, you better get, you better, you better get people here, man. You better get people here. You better. Illegally detained, and look at that—the backpedaling went so far as the cuffs. That's go. right. I explained oh to God, him that see. he was trespassing. I no longer wanted him look recording this. into the this office. Of force. The ridiculous, the ridiculous amount of force put on these cuffs. Ridiculous amount of force. Look at this, dude. You're in trouble. You are in so much trouble, and I love it. And that's what you he was doing. So he was using the phone, pretty much where there was business. However, Officer Middleton wasn't satisfied with his own decision, a characteristic that doesn't reflect well on him as a leader. No, I can't. I can say whatever the f I want, want to you. I can say God, whatever deal. the f I want to you. All right, I'm going to detain him, Judge, there we go and again. he's arrested. All right. Here we go again. Let's go, baby. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. All right, this is a, a building you cannot curse. No, I can't. It's door disorderly conduct, no, it's okay? No, it's not. No. So two different cases now. Two, two different cases. All right. First Amendment. So, are you gonna are you gonna illegally? Yeah, this is. You're gonna illegally is, seize my phone again. No, I'm not again. illegally seizing anything. Okay, right. here we go. See you later, guys. Have fun. Good. All right. Let's go. 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 And once more, a third detainment occurs, making the situation increasingly absurd. It turns out that Officer Middleton's misconduct wasn't limited to his professional life. The state of California later found that he carried this aggressive behavior into his personal life, leading to forced resignation a few weeks later due to allegations of domestic abuse against his wife. It's uncertain whether this event finally brought his misconduct to light for all to see, or if it simply encouraged others to speak up about his abusive behavior. Ultimately, Officer Middleton lost his job because of these developments. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. Officer Thomas responded to a call on Vance Avenue on April 13th, 2018, after a neighbor reported that a man named Polo was brandishing a weapon. This incident would lead to one of the largest lawsuits ever filed in Tennessee. E Polo! Now, what's your name? What's going on? I don't know. They calling. They calling. Who are we calling about? <laughs> calling about me, Calling about you? <laughs> hey, how about you watch your mouth for your ass gets on the back of my car? Hey, listen. No, get your ass over here. You're not part of this. Come here. Officer Thomas arrived at the scene and encountered Nate Carter standing by a mailbox outside his home. Following a brief exchange, Thomas informed him that he was involved now. Importantly, the description provided in the call Thomas responded to was for a male in a green shirt and black pants, a description Carter did not fit. Come here, right now. Come here. You can't go for what? Despite Thomas issuing what was technically a lawful order, Carter believed he wasn't part of the situation and decided to return to his house. However, he was taste in front of his door. It seems clear that the only reason Thomas escalated the situation was due to a bruised ego. Get over here now! Get over here right now! Taser deployed. Start me at 20. Thomas showed no restraint. After unnecessarily intensifying the situation, he further entrenched himself in his wrongful actions and even threatened to shoot Carter's dogs on several occasions. If it weren't for the dogs, Carter might have faced an even graver situation than being tased. Get your ass out of here now! Get your ass over here now! I want to your now! Get your ass out of here now!
Concerned for the safety of the children inside the home, Carter chose to walk them out to the police and surrender voluntarily. Subsequently, the footage from Officer Thomas's body camera captured a scene reminiscent of the George Floyd case. Hey, sweetie, come here. Come here. It's okay. Y'all come here. Hey, y'all come here. Everything's okay. You stay right there. Hey, you come over there. You go over there. Come here. Come here now. Come here now. Get away from the door. No, sweet boy. It's okay. I'm not going to take you by mail. I'm not just leaving. I'm not going to take my mail. An unwarranted show of force was evident from the police as Carter's children screamed in the background. Their father endured the violence of a corrupt police force, supported by the very taxes he pays. In the car. Yes. Okay. I got the handcuffs too tight. Who cares? Get in the car. Who cares? Get in the car. Man, for real. For real. Get in the car. Man, for real. For real. Get in the car. After a while, the person who called showed up and said that Carter wasn't the one with a weapon. Officer Thomas quickly started to blame him, even though he knew Carter didn't fit the description. I'm the one to call, you called, correct? Yeah. Was this about him, correct? No, no, no. It was, the, uh, it was another guy, but he ran through. He had the Glock. He was standing by that telephone pole, and he was talking about shooting them. Me and her was in there playing cards, and he was talking about, you know, and uh, he was talking about. Because when I house. walked up, you said, yes, that's him. No, no, I did. Yes, no. you did, because I walked up and I said, who are you here about? And he said, yeah, that's why I'm here. And so when I started confronting him about going in the house, that's oh, when all this erupted. I, I asked you, I said. I misunderstood what you said. Because when I walked up here, I said, is this him? He was like, no, I don't know you're talking about open years, blah, blah, blah. And I said, is this why I'm here? And you said, yes, that's why you're here. Yeah, because when you started going toward him to the steps, I was hollering, that's not him. But he was all, but he, see, he just ignorant. He, he always, uh, yeah, I know. you know, talking. Yeah. Pulled up here, and he was standing out in the middle of the road, and I was like, well, I'm guessing this guy could be it. What was the, I didn't even hear what the initial call was. Somebody said they had a threat to shoot this guy. And so when I pulled up, he walked out of the house, and this guy was telling me, to, like, I said, hey, are you Polo? And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Leave me alone. Like, he's calling you, shoot. He's like going like this, like, shoot, shoot. And I was like, well, I'm trying to figure out why I'm here. And he's like, he called you, not me. Now go deal with him. And I was like, I said something to him. Um, I asked him, like, what is your name? He made some comment. I said, what? And he said, how about you open up your ears and shut your mouth? And I was like, how about I say, excuse me? And then so I asked him for his ID. And he was like, man, what you talking about? Leave me alone. Well, in my mind, that's the guy who has the and he had his, he had his body turned like this the whole time, but wouldn't move at all. He wouldn't move. And I was like, I said something to him. I said, how would you come over here to get me right there? And he's like, no, I'm going back in my mouth or going back in my house. And I said, come here right now. And he said, for what? I said, give me your ID. I said, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. But the whole time he's going like this, and then he kind of stepped towards me and started walking back in the house. So I'm thinking he's going to go get either do something with the So I tased him right in the back. The main point of the story is that the officer went with a gut feeling, despite being told by the caller that Carter wasn't the person involved. I'm serious. For real? As I were to I'm trying to resist you. You're oh. a coward, dog. You're a coward. Thank you. You may... I hope you live. Sleep good at night. Oh, I do. I sleep really good. Head. Oh, thank okay. you. You don't go to church or nothing, but you're a personal agent. You're trying to save your you had no reason to even talk to me. You want to call to my address? Right. You didn't even check on who, was the, who had the call or whatever was called, did you? Did you check on that, the reason why you came? I did. No, no, you didn't. I did? Right. No, you didn't. Oh, okay. My name's Polo. Right. My name's no damn Polo. Go arrest some of these gang members down here killing people. Right. Fuck alone. Oh. Make sure you come to court. I will. Man, I know you won't. Nate Carter faced charges of disorderly conduct and resisting arrest, but they were eventually dropped after a review of the body camera footage highlighted Officer Thomas's clear misuse of force. Assistant Chief Glenn Scruggs of the police department, after reviewing a case summary, concluded that Officer Thomas had violated several department policies. 
The violations included the use of excessive force not aligned with department standards, providing official reports that were false and misleading, ignoring complaints from a detainee, and engaging in behavior and language with the public that was both unnecessary and unprofessional. Consequently, Carter filed a lawsuit seeking $3 million in damages, which also outlined the offenses committed by Officer Thomas. This case underscores a victory for justice, serving as a potent reminder for law enforcement officers in Tennessee to adhere strictly to appropriate force guidelines. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.